You're a ghost trying to peacefully enjoy your garden. And quite frankly, you're tired of all these adventurers trying to put you to rest. I was extremely careful of how I placed the sword onto the downed fighter's chest. Too haphazard and he would think he had just been thrown out of the graveyard. Too careful and he would think I was preparing him for a crypt. Around the fourth time I dragged someone out of the garden, I'd had put the sword at an angle just off-center. It had been the only time they had gotten the message. As the fighter murmured about something about needing to pay, I floated back into the garden to find where I'd left the archer that had come after me. He and his friend had been woefully unprepared, and I loathed the idea of wasting time putting them back to sleep after they had woken up. I just wanted to get the roses replanted before the sun rose, and I needed to hide away for a while. The ranger was draped over a tombstone, his cape covering Mr. Erickson's death date. I wrapped my arms around his and heaved. Back when I was corporeal, this would have been easy, but everything felt harder when I also needed to take the time to grant myself a physical form. I couldn't even get the ranger fully off the ground and needed to drag his boots across the lawn, which was a pain. Minutes later, I had laid him down beside the fighter, snuggling his bow and still sound asleep. Based on the mood, it had been about an hour since I'd won the fight, and I was running out of time to do errands this evening. Seeing as I wasn't going to be able to replant the entire bed of roses, I figured I might as well leave a note for them to wake up to. I checked through the ranger's bag to find a quill and paper and got to floating them. Dear adventurers, I frowned. That was a stupid start. But writing without hands wasn't an easy process to start, so it was going to have to do. Dear adventurers, I am the ghost that lives in the garden. Please let me live here. I know that the estate owner wants me out, but... I stopped writing. But what? I was sure there was a reason that I was here, why it was the only place that I felt comfortable and the only place that I wanted to stay at. There had to be a reason, but I couldn't tell why. I couldn't articulate anything about who I had been or why I liked gardens or any of that. I didn't have a memory to explain why I deserved to be on someone's property. I am the ghost that lives in the garden. Please let me live here. I know that the estate owner wants me out, but I really like the roses. Please stop trying to get rid of me. The letter looked incomplete without a signature, but I wasn't sure how I could even sign it, so I just added ghost to the end. It seemed good enough. People loving roses was as good a reason as any to stay somewhere. I'm sure the mansion owner wanted me out of the garden so that he could like the roses, which was just greedy. The garden wasn't haunted by me during the daytime, and I barely even considered what I did haunted, just undoing horrible design decisions. The ranger cracked an eye open, and I went invisible before I started to back away. He took a quick look around before pulling his cloak tight around his wiry frame and drifting off back to sleep. I sighed and wandered back into the gates of the mansion garden to make sure that Mr. Erickson was doing okay. There was a small chip out of the tombstone when I got there, which must have happened when I caused the ranger's bow to misfire. I frowned and tried to float the small piece that had fallen off back into place, but it would need to be glued. I cursed and sighed again. I could go into town to get some glue. After all, it might have been my gravestone. There were only three graves in the garden, and it made sense that I was the ghost of one of them, right? I didn't think I would be a ghost from the next town over. Maybe I was a vagrant ghost. The cracks of dawn peeked over the horizon, and I frowned. I had gotten nothing done tonight in terms of gardening, and soon it was going to be too cold to move plants around. I just needed less distractions, and then everything would be fine. As I went to slip back underground, I heard the voice of the ranger waking his companion up. They said something about backup, but the sun was making me sleepy. 
God damn it. This story was written by Written Insanity. Read by Bag Vicodin. Thank you for listening.